I recently returned from a trip to the beach and I collected a bunch of items and I'm going to take a look at them now. So I've said on multiple occasions, I like to collect things when I'm out and about. You know that I like to collect dandelion seeds and salvage seeds. I put them into a little box, take them home so I could photograph them in the studio. And I recently came back from a trip to the beach and I saw a whole load of stuff that looked very interesting to photograph on the beach. I got some wood, some shells and some stones that I found on the beach. Now, I couldn't take everything home that I wanted to, but these are the little few items I picked up because I thought they was interesting. And I'm going to take a look at them now and we're going to photograph some of them and see what they look like. So the first things we're looking at are these little pieces of driftwood. And on a side note, it's great being a macro photographer because you don't need to pick up large pieces. We only need little pieces for insects to stand on. So we have these interesting pieces of wood. Look at that one. I really like that one. I'm not going to photograph the wood in this video because I might save the wood for when I get a new praying mantis and we might photograph the praying mantis on one of these bits of wood. I really do like this particular one here. That's got some interesting shapes and texture to it. Then of course, when you're at the beach, you can always pick up some shells that you can photograph. This one looks interesting as well as these two here, some interesting patterns. But the things that caught my eye were these stones. We've got these stones here and they've got interesting patterns on. And do you remember when I talked about um, dried fruit? I'd dry out some fruit like a tangerine that I then photograph the jumper spiders on. It's the same principle here. And what I was keeping an eye on is a stone that has interesting texture, but is small enough to fit in my bag. This one popped up. I mean, I'm not too sure what it is. I don't think it's a natural stone. I'm not too sure. If anyone knows what that type is, then do please let me know. And then we have these type of ones here. Very interesting texture on the stones. So obviously I've got a lot of stones here and I'm going to take you through the procedure that I do to nail down which ones do I want to keep and which ones don't I want to keep. The first thing we need to do is to get our camera. I'm going to use my EOS R with the 100mm lower lens with my trim macro flash. There's videos about this setup all over my YouTube channel so if you want to get more detail about what this is then please do check out those other videos. Now let's put these rocks to one side for one minute. And the first thing I really want to play with are these two. I'm not too sure what type they are. They look, I don't know if they look man-made or what, I don't know, but I don't know what they are. I'm not an expert when it comes to uh, rocks, okay? So I'm just going to place this rock anywhere, basically. I'm going to take a look through my lens and see what I like. If I like something, I'm going to then take a picture of it to see what the texture looks like under my setup. So that looks very interesting. The downside of this particular one is it's big, it's huge, and it is heavy as well. Let's put that to one side because that might be one you might want to keep in the studio. Let's take a look at this little rock here. And again, this one has some nice texture to it as well. Now, this particular rock here is basically the same as the first one we photographed. I'll put that to one side. The other two that are catching my eye are these two. And I think they'll be a little bit too small for wild jumping spiders to go on to. But uh, let's just have a look, shall we? They all look very, very interesting. I want to photograph uh, this shell as well. So the idea here is you would take one of these uh, stones, you put it in your bag, and when you find a wild jumping spider, you can place the jumping spider onto one of these and you can turn it around as it's running around and take a picture. It's a hard thing to do, it's something you have to get used to, but it is an idea that you can do. And unlike my dried up fruit, you're not going to squash this one in your bag, okay? And it also doesn't smell, because uh, sometimes my bag smells of tangerine, not a very good uh, thing to do. But for this particular video, what I want to do is concentrate on one of the big ones. We're going to concentrate on a studio shoot, and I want to concentrate on this big one here. So let's place this on our desk here. 
Because we haven't done this for a while, I'm going to go over from the start. So we're going to build up the scene from the start to the end result. So let's take a look at it. Now, I like this one. It's got a nice dark look to it. It's got some nice texture. So we are going to be using this one. And I'm going to set my lens to... So I'm going to set it to one to one to begin with. So now we need some sort of background for this. And I think that this particular rock will be a nice candidate for one of my dark and moody textures. Have you checked out my macro background textures? I've created several packs for background textures for macro photography. So being able to manipulate the background with a background texture is very, very useful. Whether you're out in the field or in the studio, these background textures are great. You simply download them and print them out yourselves and take them anywhere with you. Check out the link in the description or go to stuartwood.com for more information. Now, back to the video. What I'm going to do is have a look at the textures, place it onto the rock like this. You can see there that matches quite nicely. But again, we're never going to know until we actually photograph the texture. Let's do that now. Okay, so I'll place the texture in the background there and we'll take another picture. Yeah, that's looking okay. All we're missing now is a subject. So let's go ahead. Let's get one of our jumping spiders onto here and hope that she'll keep still long enough that we can take a picture. There we go. Okay, she's on there now. I'm just going to try and manipulate the spider into a position that I want. She's quite docile at the moment. She's not very active. So there's a good chance we can get a half decent image of this spider. And I click my fingers sometimes because they it's, it doesn't sparkle them, but they go, oh, what's that? And they turn around and... Uh, Kind of give you a pose when you do that. And again, as always, we can turn the rock around because it is a round rock. Okay, I kind of got a kind of an image. Let's just try it. So when you're doing this type of thing, don't go for an absolutely spectacular image. Just go for a shot that you can use. I now have a shot I can use. So now we can start playing around with the setup a little bit. So let's get uh, let's get one of the smaller ones out, shall we? And I'll show you the practical reason why I'm looking for these type of stones. I'm going to get this one out actually, because she's a bit adventurous. Move that one out of the way. So now you've got to imagine now that um, you know you're out in the wild. You found yourself a wild jumping spider. And in fact, let me just put that down. Uh, let me get a blue background. So you're going to have a little bit of imagination here, okay? So you've got to imagine that this blue card is actually the sky. So you're going to hold up your stone with your jumping spider on and photograph it. So this is how we're going to do it now, look. So we have our blue sky in the background. We'll twist the stone around, looking through our viewfinder until we get a nice shot of our spider. And then we take the shot. I'm going to set my lens to two to one. So I've got maximum magnification. And there you go. And granted, it's going to be a lot harder in the wild to do this because your, your wild jumpers are not going to keep still. They're active, they've warmed up. Um, but yeah, this particular method can be very useful for photographing jumping spiders. The same can be said if you pick up a leaf in the wild, which I have shown you before on the channel. Okay, she doesn't want to play ball now, she's had enough. And again, once the spider's had enough, that's it for me. I'll put them back into their enclosure. So yeah, I am always on the lookout for different items that we can use. And this rock here, I mean, there's three rocks that I like, yeah? This one again is too big, but will be great for a studio setup. This one is too small, but again, might be all right for a studio setup. This one I think is the perfect size. So I might start putting that into my bag so that we can put jumping spiders on or subjects out in the wild and photograph them. So when you're out and about, keep an eye out for different objects that look interesting or nice colors, nice textures that you can take home and photograph in your studio. What type of objects do you photograph in your studio? Let me know in the comments below. But that's where I shall leave it. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video. My name is Stuart Wood, and again, as always, I'll see you on the next video.
So I've recently returned from a seaside trip where I picked up a load of bits that look interesting that I want to photograph. <laughs> Intros are the worst, are you? So I've recently... Boring intro, you've got to hook them, hook them, hook them. I am always picking things up when I'm out and about. Oh, five minutes in, I ain't even got the intro done yet. I'm always on the lookout for... I am always on the lookout for objects to photograph for macro photography. I recently came back from a... Uh, misfire. I've got to get me a new flash I have. And I click my fingers because sometimes that gives the... Um, they... So what other items do you pick up? So what other... Fo Here's an added tip for you. When you're recording videos for YouTube, it's not as straightforward as it seems. I've now got to go into my camera and double check that I have an image that's killer. An image that, you know, I would sit down and go, right, that's, that's a great image. We can use that for the thumbnail. And I do believe we have a couple. Yeah. So always double check if you are a YouTuber because the worst thing you do is when you come to process the images for your video and find out they're all blurred. <laughs> anyway, get out of here. I'll see you on the next one.